quick shout out to our sponsors, Anglesey Family Chiropractic. He is in Coeur d'Alene and Spokane Valley. Dr. Anglesey is amazing. I've known him for 30 plus years. He helped me to get feeling great after not seeing a chiropractor ever in my life. He was the first one I saw and I am feeling great because of him. Go check him out. Anglesey Family Chiropractic. Taigatu Clothing Company. It's a lifestyle brand based out here in the Pacific Northwest, owned and operated by two brothers. I love this brand because they started in their garage as a hobby and they've blown this thing up. Look, their motto is freedom from ordinary. I definitely recommend you go check out Taigatu Clothing Company. Rewebbed Inc. It's a family and veteran owned full service digital agency. I've been working with these guys for a while and there's a few things that I can tell you about them. They're very trustworthy, they're transparent, and they're honest. They're on this mission to help small businesses grow and get modern without losing the value that actually built those businesses. They're definitely worth your time. Go check them out, rewebbed.com. Mike, your husband, a father, the founder of the Makeover Master, host of the Made Over podcast, your author, entrepreneur, much more. Thank you again for taking time, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'd like to go back a little bit. You know, What was childhood like for you and, and where did you grow up? Did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, uh, childhood, uh, I, I feel like I almost got robbed because I had it so easy. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all of, our, all of our skills and character and everything come through periods of adversity. And, uh, and I had a very good childhood, you know, like I grew up in the, the Portland, Oregon area. Okay. Um, I really, I, I, from as far back as I can remember, I thought I was just going to be a pro baseball player. You know, even from a, a very young age, I was wearing my hat to bed and, and um, very easy childhood. My, my parents were like middle age uh, or middle income kind of standard, you know, like they, they, my mom worked at Nike. My dad ran a little steel company that he had. And, okay. and I think that's where a lot of my entrepreneurial, um, you know, qualities came from was watching my dad, you know, he always was trying to take an idea and then convert it into his own thing and make his own thing out of it. Um, and then I got a lot of, of, you know, consistency and worth that work ethic type of stuff by watching my mom, you know, she, she kind of followed that standard path of, um, I'm going to work for a company for 30 plus years and, and, uh, bless her heart. I could never do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, I just, I just spent the first 23 years of my life thinking I was going to play pro baseball and, and I had no plan B. Um, okay. so when I got, when I got done with college and realized that was not going to happen, I, I, uh, tore a ligament my freshman year in my elbow and, and realized this is probably not going to happen when you're throwing 79 miles an hour. Uh, you're probably not going to be in the pros. Yeah. Um, so I had to figure something else out and I, I fell into the mortgage industry and then, and then, uh, kind of started finding my way from there. Yeah, I mean, in, while you were in the mortgage industry in the early 2000s, we had 10 offices, six partners, 250 employees, and then you lost it all in the 2008 recession, which was yeah. a crazy time. But then between 2008, 2015, you ended up launching like 50 plus businesses. Mm. What, when that recession hit, what is going through your mind? Well, I think, I think I followed the standard path that a lot of people follow is you're told, you know, go to high school, go to college, uh, start a job, you know, get a, get a job or, or, um, maybe create your own company. And so we built this thing from scratch to, to, like you said, 250 employees, uh, in less than five years, but we were, we were highly leveraged. And I think that more of my identity at the time was wrapped up into the traditional American dream. So I'll, I had the house, I had the cars, I had the wife, I had the kids, but I was miserable. Mm -hmm. I was in an office 80 hours a week. I wasn't happy. I wasn't doing something that kind of really I was passionate about. I, I thought I was. Um, and so I felt like my identity got stripped away because I went from liquid millionaire to $200,000 in debt in less than six months. Wow. And so when you, when you think that the house and the cars and the money is the stuff that's going to make you happy and you find out that that's not it. Um, and then it gets all taken away from you. It really, it really forces you into a corner a little bit and, and gets you to think about, okay, what am I really doing here? And, and were these beliefs that I always thought to be true, if they're not true, what, what are my beliefs and what am I going to do next? Yeah. Um, and I think very similar, you know, you're, you're tied into the MMA space. It's kind of like you, you get punched in the face and you get knocked down. It's like, you have two choices. You, you can curl up in the fetal position or you can decide what you're going to do next and get back up. Yeah. 
Wow. And one of the most powerful moments that you talk about in your bio is one day when you left the office early, you go home, your one-year-old son's waiting there, eyes just super wide open, mm -hmm. surprised to see you. And you said that look did it for you. Walk me through that moment because I think that was pretty changing for you, man. I, you're going to make me start crying and think about that. Um, I, I mean, I remember we had this town home at the time. I walked up the stairs. So it was kind of like when you walked in the door, you couldn't see anything other than stairs, you know? Yeah. And I turned the corner and he was so excited that he almost lost control. You know, like if you, if you have kids and you have a one-year-old, you understand this. It's like, yeah. he was so excited. He started shaking, you know, to see me. And it was at that moment, I think, I think I had enough pain that, that I could clearly see that the business was starting to fail. Um, I've, I clearly was dumping all my assets back into the business at this point and I wasn't happy. And, and it was the combination of that look with a lot of pain going on at the same time where I was like, this is, this is crazy. Doesn't it, doesn't it make more sense to do something that I love to do that I enjoy? If I'm going to, yeah. if I'm going to do it, why not enjoy it? And yeah. Um, I remember talking to my wife that night and I just said, you know, I'm, I'm miserable. I'm not happy doing what I'm doing and, and I want to do something next or, or something different, you know, and yeah. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that is. And uh, she's such a supportive, uh, loving human being that she just said, well, just quit, you know, yeah. and, uh, and I did, I quit within, two, within two weeks. The next day I went into my business partner's office. I said, I want to quit. I don't want anything from you guys. You can buy me out for a dollar. Um, I just know I want to do something different. And within maybe 14 days, I was completely out of the company altogether. Wow, man. You end up securing a hundred thousand dollars in investment. You create this online business, which mm. uh, fails in five months. You move to Seattle and essentially go into hiding for like four years. Right. Yeah. What was that yeah. breaking point for you when that happened and where you just said, I'm done, I'm, you know, feeling sorry for myself. And what did you end up doing next? Yeah, I think, I think I, I had a lot of shame around that period of my life. I felt like everything was my fault. The mortgage company was my fault. Um, my first entrepreneurial failure. I, I feel like I was delusional at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, like I thought it was going to be easy to, to recreate something with a small team on my own is clearly going to be fast and easy compared to building something so big with the mortgage company. Um, and I, and, and so that first entrepreneurial failure it affected me a lot more in the mindset than the mortgage company failure, because I had taken other people's hard earned money and they had invested in, in our company and it, it flopped within five months. So I went through, this period of, okay, I, I really need to build my skills and I really need to build my knowledge and understand how this game's played online. And so I began consuming books and courses and, and investing every dollar I'd made. And kind of like you mentioned earlier, I, I tried over 50 different businesses between 2008 and 2012, really. Um, three of them took off and did pretty well. Um, so I was able to pay myself decently during, uh, 2010 to 2014 wasn't that bad financially, but I was still discovering like, what's the thing that like deep inside, what's the thing that I'm going to be excited to wake up and, and do every day. So I was always like, I feel like it was a, this long journey towards, uh, you know, like if you're, if you're lost at sea and you see a lighthouse in the distance, I always had this clear lighthouse. Like I knew I didn't want complexity. I wanted money to arrive in my bank account. I wanted to do something I love to do. And I didn't know how exactly I was going to get to the life house, the, but I, but I just kept course correcting. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I would go too far right and sometimes too far left. And I just, I always kept that lighthouse in mind. And, and I think that's, that's part of the journey is getting clear on, on what your vision is and where you're headed yeah. and then creating some underlying reasons or mindset hacks or, or tricks, so to speak, on what's, what's going to get you through the, the tough times? What's going to, how are you going to make it through the times when your boat tips over? Um, and so I had some very uh, impactful whys in my brain of why I was doing what I was doing that, that got me through the dark days. And I just kept moving towards it, you know, and, and eventually, I think, I think the turning point for me to answer your question, uh, the turning point for me was probably 2015. Uh, my brother-in-law took his own life, and 
and if you've never experienced suicide at that level, like at a, at a close intimate level, you see the destruction that it gets caused and the ripple effects through your family and emotions. And I woke up one day and I was like, I got one life to live, you know, and, and I'm not going to get to this place where I feel like I've lost hope. So if it was time for me to kind of come from out of the shadows and put myself back into the marketplace. Cause all that other stuff I'd built with another business partner. I was like the behind the scenes support and number two guy. Gotcha. And so I never really fully had to put myself out there. And, and 2014 was my breaking point where I was like, I just started doing like Facebook live videos and stuff, you know, like I'm just going to put myself out there, put my thoughts out there and see where it takes me. Come on. I have uh, experienced the, the suicide in the family as well, man. And it is not easy to go through, never fun to, to see that happen. And, and uh, man, but uh, I'm glad to see where you're at now. I mean, you are the makeover master. And for those who don't know about your services, what is it that you do now? Yeah, I, I essentially help businesses when they're stuck or sales are slow and it's not working and they can't figure out why. Cause that's where I was at in 2014 and 15. I, I had done all this work and consumed all these courses, but it still wasn't working, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I still remember that feeling very well. And it's, it's, I'm passionate about it because I see so many business owners that are, are actually maybe like three feet away from gold and they don't even know it. They're so close, but they just need a little bit of advice, a little course correction. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's with their credibility. Sometimes it's with their copy and offer. Um, so we essentially help businesses get working when they're not. And then we have a branding component to our business where we make everything pretty. Um, and, and it doesn't make any sense to make the website and the brand and all this stuff pretty if the business is struggling to get sales and, and capture leads in the first place. So, so that's what I do now. A lot of strategy advice, a lot of one-on-one -on -one work um, to help get businesses going. And then after we do that, we make them pretty after that. Come on. Yeah, I want to talk about you. I want to talk about your book, uh, "Made Over: How to Create a Powerful Brand That Will Transform Your Business and Save Your Life." Why did you decide to write that book, and what can folks expect uh, expect to get out of it? Yeah, I I didn't know it was a book at the time. I, it was like 2014, 15, 16. I was journaling a lot. I was meditating yeah. a lot because I I was trying to figure it out. Right, like why with all this knowledge, why is it still not working? I was trying to crack the code. Yeah. Um, and so as I looked down one day in my journal, I was like, the stuff that I was writing down, I was like, this could really help who I was in 2008, or it could really help somebody that's struggling with this stuff. Cause I was beginning to document like why things started to work. Like it was, it was kind of like you try so hard to get something to work and then it starts working. It's almost like you're surprised. Right. Um, I was like, I was so surprised. I started writing down like, why did this work when all this other stuff didn't work? Um, yeah. And then I looked down one day and I was like, this is a book. And, and I could have never written the book without my friend Elizabeth Lyons. Um, I just have a really hard time, just like a lot of us do. I've got a lot of thoughts and, and noise and stuff going on in my own head. I could have never gotten it from my head down onto paper and unless I had met her and she helped just interview me is what, what happened is she would interview me and ask me my thoughts and she compiled it into a book, organized it for me. And then I just had to do a final proofread. So, but what people can expect uh, from the book is it's partly my story. And then it's the step-by-step -step, uh, progression of the things that I had to fix to get the business working. And, and so when it comes to made over podcast and the book and make over events and, and the reason I play off that theme was cause I felt like I had to make over my mindset. I had to make over myself before the business would ever work. And that's, that's really what I go through in the book is how do you go from mindset to business image to actually exploding eyeballs on your brand and how do you get prospects to convert into leads? Yeah, exactly. Man, I love it. It, it. You talked briefly there about your podcast. It's mm -hmm. the Made Over podcast. You spoke to folks like Rachel Peterson and Mike Dillard. I mean, why did you decide to, to start this podcast? It's a great show, by the way. Yeah, thanks, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, I started looking, uh, this is a couple of years ago, I started looking at what are the ways that I can give value to the marketplace that are in alignment with me that are going to help people. And sometimes, you know, when you read books, Sometimes it's literally one sentence or one chapter that can change the game for you. It's like that yeah. one insight from another perspective that finally has it click. 
And so the podcast, I'm, I love, I used to love listening to a lot of podcasts. Now I don't listen to too many. Yeah. Um, I, I grounded myself from consumption at, at one <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> point, but, uh, but I knew that, that a lot of podcasts I'd listened to, it was, it was one insight or one perspective or one thing. And I wanted, I wanted business owners that were stuck and struggling to have that. I wanted them to hear other people's stories. And so you interview guys like Mike Michalowicz or Mike Dillard or Rachel Peterson, and you realize that they are human too, mm -hmm. that they also had very dark days, that they had periods. You know, Mike Michalowicz is a great interview. He, he had a period where his daughter came to him at the kitchen table with the, her piggy bank and said, it's okay, dad, let me help pay the bills. You know, it's wow, like wow. you hear those stories and you realize that somebody that has six books or somebody that has these successful courses that they also had to get through some stuff. Yep. Yep. Wow. Now you, one of the things you offer is this no catch, no cost, five minute business kind of blind spot challenge. I filled out my forms looking forward to talking with you about that, but it's this, it's not some automated quiz or survey, right? And, and it's more of an actual personalization or personal evaluation from you. Why is it important for you to not charge for this? This is pretty, pretty special. You know, uh, I think so much of the business game, if you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a small business owner, what you find at the end, when, when things are working, you find that it really comes down to getting everything into alignment with who you already are. And, and one of the ways I struggled for a long time was how do I consistently get leads into the business without being slimy, without being sleazy, you know, without uh, trying to, like, I think, I think I look back and, and so much, so much time's invested in the beginning, trying to find the hack or the shortcut. Right. When, when it's actually not a shortcut at all, it's, it's like, you just have to figure out a way that you enjoy driving leads into the business. So for me, it's podcasting. I like, I like sharing my story. And the second way was I had to figure out a way to start a relationship with value first. Mm. And so I really enjoy looking at other people's businesses and look at their social media and their website and say, okay, here's, here are the gaps. Here are the three problems why people don't convert from prospects to leads and leads into sales. Here are the four problems that create all, almost all of that. And here's what I see in looking at your stuff. Because the one thing I never got in all these courses and books is I never got direct help and specific direct advice from somebody who'd already done what I was trying to do. Yeah. And so that's, that's what I try and do is like I do about five reviews a day. Um, sometimes it builds up a, a pretty big wait list and it takes a few days to get to them. Sure. Um, but I come in, I look at the gaps and I say, okay, if you tweak this, tweak this, tweak this. And then I basically offer my services after that. I say, if you'd like more direct help, we have to hop on an interview together and have a little sales call and see if I, I should help you directly. Um, and so I'm never, I'm never begging for the sale. I'm just offering, would yeah. you like a little bit of five minute advice? Would you like a little bit of half hour advice? And would you like to work with me directly? And, and the directly part is the paid, paid part of our services. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. I wanted to shift to some fun questions here. I've got these things are called pod decks. Essentially, they're just <laughs> random questions for us podcasters. I love it. Pull one out here. See if it's not a flop here for us. <laughs> <laughs> what happened on your worst date? Whew. I didn't get laid. No, uh, <laughs> um, my awesome. worst date. Gosh, that's such a good question. I've 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 been together with my wife since two thousand one, okay. and I'm I'm trying to think. There's so many dates that went went bad. Yeah, I I think. Yeah, that is such a tough question. Just for for memory purposes, I think I think that the that I had several dates where like I used to get near and super nervous for some reason okay. and I would physically get sick to my stomach. So I would have to like excuse myself and, <laughs> and like go throw up in the restroom or something, you know, like, yeah. um, but, but I can think of a million bad dates. I just can't think of one specific one. That's the worst. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm a music guy. So I love to ask this question. What's a favorite uh, band or a favorite type of music that you like to listen to? I, you know, I have a wide range of music, but I, I really have been digging uh, Halsey, Post Malone, 
Um, but I also like Eminem. I like uh, Juice World. Uh, okay. You know, R.I.P. Juice World. But um, God, that guy was a genius for being so young as he was. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I th I think those are the big ones I'm listening to right now. I listen yeah. to a lot of Zucchero too. For some reason, I like. Zucchero okay. uh, has a lot of collaborations with Sting and other artists that are, are really cool. Nice. Entrepreneurial question here. Does it take money to make money? No. Um, I, I, I don't think it does. It takes sometimes getting over yourself, uh, right. sometimes picking up the phone. I had a, a client that had gotten stuck over the last couple of months. She'd, she'd kind of hit a lull. Um, I had a conversation with her three days ago. I gave her some advice. Um, she picked up the phone. She's made five grand this week. And so, um, nice. we don't, we don't have a website. We don't have a working offer. We don't have a pretty PDF. None of that. She picked up the phone. She had some conversations and made five grand. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. A last question for you. Who motivates you? Oh man, there's a million people. I, I think it's similar to the question of like, what was the one breakthrough moment? There's, there's yeah. a million of them, you know? Um, I get motivated by, uh, Joe Rogan motivates me, you know, like I, I, he's the one podcast I still listen to. Yeah. Um, I'm motivated. I'm motivated not as much by the people that like Gary V's and the Grant Cardone's of the world anymore. Sure. I'm more motivated by watching uh, my clients have yeah. breakthrough moments. I'm, I'm motivated by watching r another real human being that has to go through adversity and they have to overcome that adversity. Um, and I love being a part of that. I love being a part of helping them kind of have those breakthrough moments. Yeah. Mike, today's show was awesome. Thank you so much for taking time, man. It's such an honor to have you on my show. Your story is unbelievable. You are a world changer, brother. Thank you so much for taking time, man. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for watching the show today. I really appreciate it. Hey, if this show moved you or made an impact on you or inspired or motivated you, that's my goal. Please go leave us a review and a rating wherever you heard or watched this show. Leave a comment. I'll respond to all of the comments. I'm so grateful for you. Please go share this video as well. Thank you again for your time. Have a great day.